Hi folks. Two summers ago we had a long-term power outage that went out for three days in our area of the city. Uh, created a pretty serious problem for anybody with the refrigeration. Um, putting ice in the freezers only goes so far after three days. A lot of wasted food. I decided to put together a solar battery bank system setup, whatever you want to call it, to provide power under those situations to last for at least three days. Um, and it's also good for boondocking because it's easily portable. I'm going to explain why I built it the way I built it, and maybe it'll give you some ideas too. Okay, beginning with the solar panels themselves, I bought 200 watt solar panels offline. Found a pretty good special, is about 140 bucks for both of them shipped. Uh, for people who have not gotten these sorts of things yet, be aware while they're rated at 100 watts, you will never actually get 100 watts out of each panel. Um, the best I've seen out of them so far, because angle and you know cloud cover, etc., is about 75 watts a panel, 150 watts total. Uh, realistically, on a day-to-day -day where you're not adjusting the thing constantly to keep tracking across the sky, you're probably going to average more like 120 watts out of 200 watt panels. Um, the next step on this was the actual items I bought. Uh, one of them was a Renergy 100 watt amp hour battery. Uh, about, I think it's like 1154 watt hours are in this thing, plus a very inexpensive solar charge controller, plus the 12 gauge wires that are supposed to connect it to the Harbor Freight Jupiter 3000 <laughs> unit uh, converter. Um, this is not a sine wave controller. It's just a regular sort of one. Um, that I was okay with that in part because the only thing I'm really running off this is our refrigerator and freezer. I'm plugging them in individually. It's capable of 3000 watts and based upon other people's online testing with the same sort of an arrangement, this battery should, without any solar power assist, be able to run the refrigerator for about 24 hours. Um, that's not enough for my uses here, so which is why I went with the solar panels. Uh, the fact that it could go about 24 hours out of 1154 watt hours means the refrigerator uses approximately 50 watt hours per hour. So if you do the math on that, if I'm getting, let's say only 100 watt hours out of these 200 watt panels, real low well, well down there for the amount of sunlight that i'd actually get a day that'll be about 800 watt hours put in or another 16 hours of use on the refrigerator um, with a little luck you'll get a little bit more than that but you kind of get the idea the math works ish <laughs> again i'm only looking for three days not for indefinite day in day out one you know one year to the next uses the other thing that i did that was a little bit unusual is because i have a very small city lot I have a problem running these solar panels to where they can be in the sun all day long. I actually have to move them repeatedly to keep them in the sun, out from underneath the tree shade, other houses shades, etc. like that. What I decided to do to make it possible to run my solar panels to this battery uh, with all the frequent moving of the solar panels is to use a regular extension cord. The extension cord can be any length. Uh, it's not the most efficient thing at the connectors. Uh, I'm going to have a little voltage drop each connector. But what it does let me do is use all my long extension cords I already have to connect from indoors from this connector right here through the units through the adapter I made and what this adapter is it's an appliance cord it's a heavy gauge appliance cord I cut it in half crimped on connectors to plug into the solar panels in parallel in this case took the other half of the panel or cord excuse me and ran it from here into the input of my solar charge controller. That allows me to run any extension cord arrangement I want as long as it's big enough to handle the load. And we're only probably talking about 10 amps on here, realistically, maybe a little slightly more. So a standard 14 gauge cable actually does the trick. Um, it actually is pretty simple to use. You just plug and play everything. The reason I decided to do the female at this end, because people are wondering, well, what if somebody plugs something into it? Well, nothing, it's only connected to the solar panel. If I had put the male end at this end, somebody might have inadvertently plugged that in with an extension cord into the wall of the house to shore power, blowing up my charge controller. So this way makes it impossible. That of course means that when I'm, this is plugged in to the solar panels, these terminals are actually live. But the fact of the matter is they're only 12 volt DC with maybe a 10 volt back behind them. Very unlikely to get any kind of a shock. It's like touching car battery terminals it's very difficult to get any kind of a shock off something like that, so I felt it was safer to do it that way. 
And now on to the rest of the construction of this. Uh, the reason I put it in a milk crate in the first place is twofold. One, I wanted to make this entire unit to be portable. I can use it at home. I can take it to my children's home while they're out of power. I can even take it boondocking if I want to, if I'm going to be out someplace far away. Uh, this unit would actually run my little camper for quite a while. It's a large, large battery. Um, I built it in there for a couple of reasons. The first one, of course, the milk crate protects everything. Everything's below the level of the top. Nothing sticks out. Uh, the handles make it easy to pick up. And the framework of this gave me a way to attach everything so it's very sturdy. The Jupiter, if you look in it, is just screwed into this piece of wood. There's four connections, which is pretty solid. And I took the board itself and I drilled some holes through and I zip tied it, as you can see in these four corners, to the side of this. It holds it up off the bottom. It doesn't rest on anything. Nothing electronic is touching anything at all. It's hanging in space. The cords that come out of the bottom, which then lead to the battery, are also completely unpinched, unflexed. There, there's no real stress on them at all. The battery came with a nice strap across the top of it, which I was able to use with more zip ties to lock it on to this whole cabinet. The only way you could really have any problems is if this thing actually turned upside down. The uh, converter would still stay put. The battery might move. Oh, and of course the solar charge controller, it's just Velcro to the top of the battery. I can take it on and off as I wish. Makes any kind of maintenance easy if I have any kind of a failure or anything. This whole thing is very easy to deal with. Um, also, the Renogy battery is a Bluetooth battery. The reason that that is actually kind of handy for this sort of thing is you can tell the exact state of charge of the battery while it's in operation. You can see how much wattage is going out of it. You can see how much wattage is going into it. You can see how much charge time is left, how many char or, uh, run hours are left, depending on the load that's there currently. It's a nice little interface off your cell phone. Um, it made it all actually pretty convenient and easy to use. Uh, I haven't had to use it yet, but I know I will. <laughs> so if anybody wants to build something like this, that is how I did it and why. Till next time. <laughs>